Hey everyone, welcome back to Globetrotting. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, still pushing for 60,000 this year. For years, the industry has debated on the requirements in the dedicated middle of the market sector. And for an airliner that is able to bridge the gap between former and existing narrow bodies and wide bodies. There's been a focus on airlines requirements as well, who have aging and now inefficient planes that need replacing to serve more medium sized markets. In response, Boeing studied its new mid-sized airplane also known as the NMA and informally dubbed the 797, while Airbus countered with an incremental solution, the A321XLR. While one remains a conceptual study, the latter has already entered scheduled commercial service. As for the 797, it was designed to fill the void left by the emerging retirement of the 757 also at Boeing and the gradual phasing out that we were seeing for the 767 on short to medium haul routes at airlines right around the world. The Perspective aircraft was designed to be a clean sheet and was expected to offer more range and capacity than what was visible through the 737 MAX. While avoiding the inefficient nature of, say, an airline being forced to deploy a wide body on a service that may not have necessarily added up. Meanwhile, the A321XLR acts as a further extension to the A320 Neo family, offered as a more immediate solution without encountering the significant hurdles and or costs of moving forward with a clean sheet by enhancing upon an already existing and successful airframe especially visible through the a321 lr and neo models airbus was able to introduce a plane capable of flying 4700 nautical miles extending the reach of narrowbody operations to intercontinental markets this plane expected to be a true game changer for single aisle flying boeing's nma meanwhile has yet to materialize beyond formal studies and shifting priorities at the company have delayed any firm decision. In contrast, the A321XLR entered the market with some pretty overwhelming demand. How do the two really compare? Well, both the A321XLR and 797 were conceived to serve a similar niche. Airlines that were needing aircraft optimized for medium haul operations, ranging upwards to smaller long haul flying with limited capacity, but say still a requirement for service. The aircraft were to be deployed where traditional narrowbody aircraft say maybe lacked the range and widebody aircraft were too expensive to acquire and or operate between the city pairings. Boeing's NMA was projected to seat between 220 and 270 passengers, squarely between the largest 737 MAX model and the smallest 787 variant. Analysts have actually pointed many a time to Boeing's lack of a next-generation product to fill this gap. However, in the A321XLR being a narrowbody, it's effectively assumed this middle-of-the-market role. Its extended range allows airlines to operate city pairings that were not previously economical, such as maybe New York to a secondary European destination. If we're stretching it further, you can look at intra-Asian long-haul routes and many others that are going to be possible as the years continue. In this sense, it has become the 757 replacement, and this is certainly driven by the fact that Boeing has yet to move ahead with a dedicated replacement on its own, which could have arguably been that NMA I speak about today. It is important to also remember that the most striking difference between these two planes is that one is real, while the other remains more speculative. While this difference stands out, the speculated and release specifications are still something that is worth diving further deeper into, as they do differ. Airbus took a more measured approach. They looked to build upon a platform that was already existing by enhancing range and payload without requiring a radical design change that would, say, overcomplicate the certification and release process. Had the 797 or NMA been developed, well, it would have marked a more dramatic shift in aircraft design as Boeing envisaged this to be a clean sheet, marking its first clean sheet related aircraft since the release of the game-changing 787 Dreamliner. Optimized for shorter international routes and high demand domestic services, the NMA would have been purpose built for that middle of the market segment and acted as a dedicated replacement for aging aircraft, looking to wherever possible also erode some of the sales that had been seen in the XLR. 
and unlike that XLR, which is a iteration of an existing program, the 797 would have been purpose-built to serve this segment. Another key difference would have been production timeframes. The A321 XLR was launched in 2019, right before the emergence of the global pandemic, and is now beginning to enter airlines fleets. This is despite delays of over a year, spurred on by certification troubles with the additional fuel tank that makes the new range possible. Whereas bogged down by delays and financial challenges for a business on a whole, Boeing has repeatedly postponed any NMA decision to where they're now at a point where they won't revisit it until likely the 2030s. Even if Boeing were to announce the aircraft tomorrow, it would likely not enter service until the time frame I just mentioned, when Airbus would have already been able to secure its dominance in the segment, and would technology being implemented now truly stack up to what will be available in the 2030? No, likely based on everything that is rapidly advancing, it would be a pointless release. So there is certainly the argument that remains today that because of all the aforementioned struggles at Boeing, which I don't need to go into, a boat was clearly missed. As for the future of the planes, while well, the A321 XLR is already a game changer, and many major international airlines such as American, United, Qantas, Air Canada will all look to eventually integrate it into their fleets alongside others. Boeing, on the other hand, finds itself at a bit of a crossroads. While the NMA concept has not officially been abandoned, leadership changes continuously occurring at the manufacturer has seen a shift in focus, and rightfully so. Nowadays, the company is prioritizing having a stable production while also restoring confidence in its existing aircraft families before proceeding with a new endeavor. This decision, while a challenging one to take for those that have been, say, targeting innovation, is the right one. Boeing's finances are in a pretty rough position, and if focus weren't placed on this sector, then there would be tremendous concerns for the long-term viability of this company moving forward. The longer Boeing faces challenges, the harder it will be eventually for them to really close close the gap between themselves and Airbus, which has now the advantage of being in a much smoother position and the finances and general ability to actually develop its business and get further and further ahead of Boeing, not just from a yearly delivery and production standpoint, but also you have to understand from the development of its business moving forward in terms of investments in new technologies and testing. As a result, Boeing must prioritize sorting out its own established aircraft first, smoothening out the support supply chains for this to make sure it stands any chance of competing with Airbus moving forward to do so having a really solid financial position. Advances also in propulsion technology and even aerodynamics by the 2030s may very well require therefore a different approach to commercial air travel, especially given the focus on sustainability. Boeing just has to keep a watchful eye on the unfolding industry, which can certainly be tough at the best of times, let alone when you have production caps, certification woes, and so much more. That'll conclude today's industry analysis. I'd love to hear your take down below in the comments on one key question if you have made it this far. If Boeing had actually moved forward with its NMA dubbed the 797, how much of the market share do you think would have been eroded from Airbus? Would we have seen so many orders for the A321 XLR or a more even? split. I know it's only a hypothetical, but I am keen to hear your opinion. Would it really have been worth Boeing's while based on analysts' expectations? Thanks for watching. Take care. Do be safe tomorrow, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your next analysis right back here on Globetrotting. Trotting.